Hello everybody, this is Dr. Sneha and welcome to the Perio Hub. I hope all of you are doing great. So today we are going to talk about a very small but a pertinent aspect of the gingiva which is the interdental papilla. So in the earlier broadcast we spoke about the marginal gingiva and the attached gingiva and today we are going to discuss about the interdental papilla. So as the term suggests interdental that means the uh, the papilla or the gingiva which is present in the interdental area or enclosed in the interdental space. So what do we do we understand when we say interdental space or interproximal area? So basically we uh, state it as a physical space which is present between two adjacent teeth. Now if we try and imagine a three dimensional aspect of this interdental space then it is seen that this space is made up of four pyramidal embrasures. So the first embrasure is the occlusal or the cervical embrasure which is seen. So this is the pyramid in the occlusal aspect or the incisal aspect in case of anterior teeth. Now towards the gingival aspect we have the cervical embrasure or the gingival embrasure. Now in the buccolingual aspect we have the lingual embrasure. Its lingual embrasure is also called as palatal embrasure for, uh, uh, for maxillary teeth and ultimately the buccal embrasure on the buccal aspect. So these are the four embrasures which form the interdental space. Now where exactly does interdental papilla lie in this interdental space? So the interdental papilla occupies the cervical embrasure or the gingival embrasure in the interdental space. So this triangle is occupied by the interdental papilla. So the interdental papilla occupies the gingival portion or the cervical portion and it was first described in the year 1959 by Cohen. Coming on to an important uh, term which is the contact point. So contact point is a point of contact where the two adjacent teeth meet. So for example for these two maxillary incisors this would be the point of contact where it would meet each other. If we again see these mandibular incisors there is no point of contact between these two and thus there is spacing between the teeth which is seen. So in the incisor region, the IDP or the interdental papilla, the tip of the papilla would lie just beneath the contact point or just apical to the contact point in case of anterior teeth and it is pyramidal in shape. So if we take a sagittal section of the teeth or, or the incisors, we can appreciate the contact point and we can see how the tip of the papilla lies just apical or just beneath the contact point. Now there is a slight difference when we talk about anterior teeth as compared to when we talk about the posterior teeth. Now if we talk about premolars and molars, we know that they are much more bulkier and they have a larger surface area compared to our, compared to our anterior teeth say like an incisor or a lateral. So that is a reason that the contact point which is present between the anterior teeth is replaced by a larger area called as a contact area in case of a posterior teeth. So here the tip of the papilla is much more narrower and it lies beneath the contact point. So here it is narrow and it is pyramidal in shape. Whereas in case of posterior teeth because of the large contact area the papilla is much more broader and it forms a call shaped or a concavity which is call shaped or tent shaped in nature. So just to recapitulate, so in the incisor region uh, the interdental papilla is pyramidal in shape and in the posterior region it is much more broader and it forms a concave call or a bridge shaped structure. So this is what we are talking about where both the facial and the lingual marginal gingiva would meet each other. 
and all these terms and uh, were first described by Cohen in the year 1959. Coming on to the presence and the absence of uh, the interdental papilla and even the shape and the size of the interdental papilla. So there are various factors which influence uh, the presence and the absence of the papilla. The first being the bone level. So the alveolar crest height plays a very important role uh, in determining uh, the, the uh, shape, size and presence and absence of the interdental papilla. So as the bone recedes or if there is destruction of the bone, the soft tissue would follow the hard tissue and there would be a recession or the, uh, the tip of the interdental papilla would recede downwards along with the receding bone. So this would be the first factor that we would have to take into consideration. So the second factor which would influence would be the contact area or contact point. Now the size, the shape, the position of the contact area and point would determine the underlining interdental papilla. We spoke about the contact point and area in great detail. Um, and the third factor would be the interproximal space. So remember how we spoke about the interproximal space and how it is made up of the four pyramids, pyramidal uh, embrasures. So the dimensions that is both the horizontal and vertical dimensions of this interproximal space would uh, play a role in uh, the presence and the absence of the interdental papilla. Coming on to the classification of IDP, now there are various authors who put forward the classification systems for uh, interdental papilla but today we are going to discuss about the gold standard classification system given by uh, Norlin and Tarnow. So this classification system is based upon three reference points. So let's just have a look uh, on these reference points. So the first res uh, reference point which we talk about is the contact point or the contact area. The second and the third reference point lies on the CEJ. So if we consider this black demarcation as the cemento enamel junction, then the second reference point lies on the interproximal CEJ that is the mesial or the distal uh, CEJ. And the third reference point lies on the facial CEJ. So taking into consideration the contact point, the interproximal CEJ and the facial CEJ, which are the three reference point, let's classify the interdental papilla. So the first category is the category of normal interdental papilla, wherein the papilla would fill up the whole of the embrasure. And the tip of the papilla lies just apical to the contact point. So this is a perfectly healthy scenario. Now in class 1, the tip of the papilla is further apical to the contact point, but it is still coronal to the interproximal CEJ. So it lies somewhere between the contact point and the interproximal CEJ. Now in class 2, the tip of the papilla recedes further upwards and there is exposure of the interproximal CEJ. So if we consider this as the cemento enamel junction, so here the interdental papilla lies apical to the interproximal CEJ but coronal to the facial CEJ. Now ultimately in a class 3 scenario, the tip of the papilla lies apical to the facial CEJ as well. Now why is it important for us to understand this classification or to know this classification? So there are two major important reasons why we should know. First would be aesthetics. Now if a patient walks into our clinic with uh, posing an aesthetic problem in relation to uh, the anterior teeth, then mostly the patient would come in with a black triangle. Now what is a black triangle? So this is a typical black triangle which is caused due to the receding uh, uh, of the tip of the interdental papilla uh, leading to a black hollow space. So that is an aesthetic problem which is posed, uh, which comes forward in our dental clinic uh, and we need to know uh, this classification system for that reason. So that would be the first reason which is aesthetics. And the second reason why we, we should be knowing this classification system is to uh, provide the patient adequate oral hygiene procedure. 
So let's have a look. Uh, why should we or how should we use this classification system to provide oral hygiene methodologies to the patient. So here we uh, classify or we uh, uh, try to understand the types of embrasures uh, and then we uh, try and give a specific oral hygiene modality to the patient to clean their interproximal spaces. So in the type 1 embrasure, here the embrasure is completely occupied by a healthy interdental papilla. So the whole of the gingival embrasure is filled up with the papilla. So this is a scenario of a very healthy mouth. So in such subjects, we advocate the use of a super fine or a thin dental floss. Now in type 2 embrasures, here only 75% of the embrasure is occupied by the gingiva and rest 25 is uh, there is no gingiva which is present. So in such scenarios we advocate the use of a medium or a thick dental floss that is multi-filamented uh, dental floss. In a type 3 scenario 50% that is half of the embrasure is filled with gingiva and half is not occupied by, uh, by gingiva. So here the space is larger and that is the reason a thin uh, interdental brush can fit into this particular uh, embrasure. So in a class 3 embrasure, we move in from a dental floss to using a interdental brush. Coming on to a class 4 scenario where only 25% of the embrasure space is occupied by the gingiva. So here the space becomes the un, uh, the space which is unoccupied becomes even more larger. So to clean such a space, we need to use a thick spiral interdental brush or a uni tufted brush. And in the last scenario where there is a complete loss in the interdental uh, papilla itself, we advocate the use of either a thick spiral interdental brush or a multi tufted uh, brushes. So just to summarize, uh, we started off by speaking about the interdental space and we spoke about how this interdental space three-dimensionally can, uh, can be put into four pyramidal embrasures that is the cervical, the occlusal, the buccal and the lingual. And we spoke about the interdental papilla and how it fills the gingival embrasure of the uh, interdental space. We spoke about the different shapes of the interdental papilla that is how it is pyramidal in case of interior teeth and how it becomes call shaped or tent shaped in case of a posterior dentition. We spoke about the difference between the contact point which is seen in anterior teeth and a contact area which is seen in case of posterior teeth. We saw the various factors which influence the presence and absence of papilla. We saw the classification system uh, given by Norland and Tarnow uh, of the IDP, interdental papilla. And we saw the various classification of the gingival embrasure and which oral hygiene modality to be used in which type of embrasure. So with this, I uh, conclude this topic on interdental papilla. I hope this video was helpful and useful. Please do like this video and subscribe to this channel. I would be back soon with my next video. Until then, take good care of yourself. This is Periohab signing off.